Today I'm going to give you an overview of 33 investment terms that you absolutely need to know and I'm going to do all of these in under 10 minutes, going from the most basic ones to the more advanced ones. In the description below you're going to find a list of all the terms I'll mention, including the timestamps you see here, so that you can skip to the parts that interest you the most. My name is Rick, welcome to the channel, drop a beautiful like and now let's get right to the list because I promised you, I'll keep it short. Let's start from types of investments in the stock market, going really quick through all of them. Number one is common and preferred stocks. Stocks are small portions of a public company that you can buy, becoming a so-called shareholder of the company. Preferred stocks give you priority over a company's income, meaning you're going to be paying dividends before common shareholders. The downside of preferred stocks is that they don't come with voting rights, and since they aren't very volatile, they are less likely to go up significantly in value compared to common stocks. Number two is bonds. Bonds are loans provided by governments and corporations They pay interest to the investor. You buy a bond, you're basically loaning money until a certain time, and within that time you receive interest. Number three is index funds. An index fund is a basket of securities, like stocks for example, that tracks an index. You buy it, you're automatically becoming an investor in all the companies including in it, without having to buy the individual companies one by one. Index funds are a good way to invest because they give you instant diversification and have low fees because they are usually passively managed. Exchange traded funds, or ETFs, are a particular type of index fund that can be bought and sold anytime during the day when the market is open, just like normal stocks. Mutual funds Funds are also a basket of securities like index funds and ETFs, but they are actively managed, meaning there is a manager that personally decides what to sell and what to buy within the fund. This means higher fees and as data shows, also a lower probability to achieve good results in the long term compared to passively managed funds. If you like the idea of index funds and ETFs but would rather invest in real estate, a real estate investment trust called REIT offers a similar solution focused on real estate. If you buy a share of a real estate investment trust, the real estate investing company behind it uses this money to invest in real estate and in turn, you get dividends and possibly a raise in value of your shares themselves. Let's move now to market terms, starting by issued versus outstanding shares. Issued shares are all the shares or stock issued by a public company. Some of them are owned or repurchased by the company itself, while all the others are called outstanding shares. Going forward, ask and bid are two really important investment terms. At any given moment in the stock market, there are people that want to buy a stock and people that want to sell it. Each of them is ready to buy or sell at a specific price. The bid price refers to the highest price a buyer will pay for a security. The ask price, instead, refers to the lowest price a seller will accept to sell a security for. The difference between bid price and ask price is called spread, and the higher it is, the harder it's going to be to sell or buy the security because the liquidity is lower. A bull market is a period of time characterized by optimism where the market tend to grow high and quickly. In turn, bear markets are characterized by falling prices and investor pessimism. A market index is a portfolio used to track the performance of a particular segment of the market. It can be a sector, a group of companies with the same growth characteristics, or even the whole stock market itself. Examples of market indexes include the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the NASDAQ Composite Index, and the S&P 500. Number 11 is short selling. Short selling is betting on a security or stock to drop in value. If you short a company or short sell a company, you're borrowing stocks of the company and selling them on the open market, hoping they will drop in price so that if they do, you can purchase them back for less and repay the loan, pocketing the difference. Interestingly enough, if you buy a stock in a normal way, the most amount you can lose is what you paid, while with short selling, the risk of loss is theoretically unlimited, since the price of any asset can climb to infinity over time. Next, market capitalization. A company's market cap or market capitalization is the cumulative value of all its outstanding shares. The market cap can be calculated by multiplying the company's current share price by the number of shares outstanding. Number 13 is margin. When you open a brokerage account to invest, you will have to choose whether you want a cash or a margin account. Margin is basically using borrowed money to invest. The credit will come from the broker and your entire account is considered collateral. The hope is that you will be able to make a higher return with the borrowed money than the interest rate charged by the broker for the margin loan. Let's move on now to some useful terms to analyze stocks to invest in. The first one is alpha. Alpha measures the excess return of an investment relative to its benchmark index. An alpha of 1.0 means the investment has outperformed its benchmark by 1%. 
An alpha of minus 1.0 means the investment underperform its benchmark by 1%. Beta is the volatility of a security against the market as a whole. A beta greater than 1.0 means it's more volatile than the market. A beta less than 1.0 means the security or portfolio is less volatile than the market. The Sharpe ratio is a measure for calculating the risk-adjusted rate of return of an investment. The higher the Sharpe ratio, the better the returns have been relatively to the risk and volatility. Earnings per share, or EPS, are the net earnings of the company divided by the number of common shares outstanding. A PE ratio or price to earning ratio is the ratio between the price of a share and the earnings derived from it. For example, if a company stock is trading at $100 per share and is expected to earn $4 per share, its PE ratio would be 25. The lower the PE ratio, the better. A 10K is the most important annual financial report of a public company and is publicly available on their websites. In the 10K, you'll find a full explanation of the company, including things like risks, plans, and financial statements. Number 20 is assets. An asset is anything that can grow in value or generate an income. Cash is an asset, for example, as well as securities such as stocks and bonds, as well as real estate. A liability instead is something that causes you to lose income or that loses value over time. A debt is a liability because it causes you to pay interest and things like a phone or a car are liabilities because they lose value over time. Return on assets is a metric that indicates a company's profitability in relation to its total assets, and is calculated by dividing its net income by its total assets. An efficient company manages to generate higher profits than an inefficient one given the same assets. So the higher the ROA, the better. Return on equity is a similar ratio to the return on assets, but instead of dividing the net income with the assets, you divide it by the shareholders' equity, which is assets minus debts. That's why the ROE is also considered the return on net assets. The return on invested capital, ROIC, gives a sense of how well a company is using its capital to generate profits. It's calculated by dividing net operating profit after tax NOPAT by invested capital. ABITDA, or earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, is another measure of profitability to net income. To calculate it, companies sum net income with depreciation, amortization, taxes, and debt payment costs. What comes out is a representation of the cash profit generated by the company's operation. Moving to the next, the annual turnover ratio is the percentage of the holdings of an index fund or a mutual fund that have been replaced within a year. For example, a mutual fund investing in 100 stocks and replacing 60 stocks during one year has an annual turnover ratio of 60%. The expense ratio is the total percentage of the fund's assets that you're going to pay yearly as fees. Fees include management costs of the fund, record keeping costs, taxes, legal expenses, and accounting. An expense ratio of 1% for a fund would mean that every year, 1% of your fund portfolio value is taken out as fees. The net asset value, or NEV, which you'll often see when you check the performance of an ETF online, is the daily price per share of the fund. To conclude, let's list five retirement investment terms. The first one is the 401k. A 401k is a retirement plan offered by employers where you contribute money each pay period and your employer typically matches up to a certain amount of your contribution. Next to the 401k, you have the so-called IRAs, individual retirement accounts. An IRA is like a 401k, except it doesn't involve an employer. You simply contribute money on a regular basis and allow that money to grow until you can withdraw it after 59 years and a half of age without penalties. In case of a traditional IRA, you contribute to it with pre-tax money, but then the money is taxed upon withdrawal. A Roth IRA instead is a particular type of IRA where you contribute money that's already been taxed by income tax. But it can grow tax-free and be withdrawn tax-free if you wait until you are 59 years and a half of age. With a rollover IRA, you can roll funds from a previous employer sponsor plan over to an IRA. This allows you to avoid paying any penalties while keeping a tax deferred status of your retirement plan. To conclude, a target retirement account is a diversified portfolio that over time readapts the mix of stocks and bonds based on how close you are to retirement, reducing the exposure to risk investments over time. I hope that this list was useful. If it was, don't forget to drop a beautiful like and subscribe to the channel for future videos on investing and finance. If you have any doubt on any term of this video, just drop a comment below and ask whatever you want. If you're interested in an introduction to ETF investing or index fund investing, check out one of these two full guides here. And guys, thank you so much for watching. I wish you a great day or evening 
And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.